What is up YouTube? Welcome back for another episode of Mortal Realms Monday. Now this week we've got uh, something that's a little bit special. We are painting uh, Exandria Azure Bolt from issue 5 of Mortal Realms. Now Exandria is a, if I get this right, a Knight Encantor, I believe. Um, either way she is a Wizard Knight. Um, so she casts, you know, magic and spells and stuff, um, which makes her a hero or a special character. So instead of the usual um, layer, wash, two more layers and a highlight that we do, or layer, wash, high la layer, highlight, um, depending on how quick you want to get your models done, uh, with heroes and special characters, single models, you want them to stand out a little bit more on the battlefield. So what we're going to be doing with this one is painting her up to really stand out um, with a few more layers, a lot more detail, uh, some, some smoother blending than we usually would do. And uh, yeah, she's gonna look she's gonna look great. So what I've already done to, to get us a, a head, um, because this will be split into uh, a few segments, so that they're not too long each and you know you're not sitting there for two three hours watching a, a video what we're going to do is focus on certain areas of her per video so what i've done is undercoated or primed her in gray and then i have painted the the base layers for each area so what I'm going to do now is name out the colours that I've used for each area. These are single colours, no mix. They are as they are from the pot, just a little bit thinned down and then layered up until we get a, a nice even coating on them. Um, so as I lay, call them out, you can make sure you get the right colours in the right places. And then you can bring yourself up to where I am here and then we can go ahead and take it uh, from there. The only colour that I haven't done is the robes. And that is because we'll be doing that today and that is going to be using a mixture of Abaddon Black and Cantor Blue. But we'll get to that in a bit. So first of all, all the gold armour we've done with uh, Mournfang Brown. So that's just a, a couple of layers of Mournfang Brown over anything that is going to be gold. So if we rotate the model here, we've got the gauntlet area and the hand, uh, but not the palm. The chest plate, the legs, the top of the staff here. Uh, this area that I haven't painted is going to be a different colour, so I've left that out for now. Uh, some of the gems I've gone over, uh, for example, here and here and here, these would actually be red gems, but it's just easier for the stages that we're doing to just go over with your brown. Um, the top of the staff here, the pommel of the sword. The, uh, the guard of the sword and the gold bits on the scabbard as well as the area here and this part down here at the base of the staff so that's the browns next we've got the blacks and that's anywhere that is going to be either black or silver um, so we've got this emblem area here uh, we've got the black on the scabbard behind the knees the belt under here, um, behind the knees here and the belt here as it comes down, in between the joints here and the palm on both areas here and here. Next we have Screamer Pink and that is just the handle of the staff and the sword. Then we have a layer of, let's make sure we get this one right, that's Zandri Dust. For the front tabard here, that's Mephiston Red on the inside, and then the inside of the robes, just around here, between here, and then underneath, is Eshin Grey. So if you want to pause the video and go ahead and get yourself up to speed by painting these areas, again you can rewind slightly and just listen to you know the areas that I point out make sure you get them right 
don't worry if you miss places obviously as we come to painting those in late one in the video or uh, other other videos we'll be able to go in and just touch those up just before we go through and um, work on them so for today's video like I said we're gonna be focusing on the blue which is this area here down here inside of here but not the lightning bolts although it doesn't matter if we get it on that the back of the rope here and the back of these pieces here so first of all we're going to take some cantor blue get a nice helping of that on the the palette here for our highlight and mixing we're going to be using techless blue Also going to want some Abaddon Black. And finally, some ceramite white. Right, so first of all, we're going to take a good amount of this Cantor blue and some Abaddon black and we'll go for about a three to one ratio of the, the black and the blue and this is going to end up a very dark blue and this is what we want So all we're going to do is thin this down and use this to cover the areas just like we did with the uh, the other primary, the base colours. The only reason we didn't do it is obviously I wanted to show you that we were mixing. So all we're going to do is just go over all the areas that we've got left. as I showed you the the areas that we're going to be doing blue and then just paint them paint them with this dark blue mix so while I get on with this I'll let you get on with yours and we'll be back in just a bit so when I come back you can just pause the video catch up and then carry on with the next segment so I'll see you in a minute guys okay so once we've got all our dark blue down we should have a nice even coverage like this just on the inside of the the hood there so next up we want to take about a 50 50 mix of straight cantor blue and our dark blue here so i'm just going to mix that up right up next to it here just to darken up this cantor blue slightly and then we're going to thin it down quite a bit
Okay, so now that we've got this mix, all we're going to do is cover almost almost the entire model again, but leaving the darkest areas where the light is less likely to reach. So that will be right down in the crease here, and just coming up slightly on one side, down in the creases. These creases will actually be slightly lighter because the light is shining directly into them, so we will go into them. So we'll leave a slight gap just up on the edge there, and then we'll come down the side slightly, and then back this way. This recess we will leave the the deepest pit there but we will just pick off this ridge and the inside slope on these areas and this will be barely noticeable the the change between the dark blue and this blue that we're now applying should be so minimal that you won't notice it um, you probably won't notice it on the camera here but all we're doing is just looking to build it up so the first couple of layers you'll barely notice any transition what we want to do is try not to go back over any area that we've done until it's had a time to dry. So we're just going to work our way around the model. Now with areas like this, we do have a pauldron that will be on here, but I haven't attached them so that we can get to these areas a little bit easier. But it means that this coming down here will be in shadow and then this area will be light with the lightest part being at the bottom. So what we're going to do is just pick off from about halfway up, just going up the slope and then coming down to the end like so. And then the same with the other one, the edge here will be under pauldron so we'll just go ahead and take this area here if we come from the other side just underneath you can see most of it is going to be a shadow so we don't have to worry too much about getting full coverage there so the inside here now because the light is coming from above the majority of this will be in shadow so we're just going to pick any top edge off and we're going to stay away from anywhere under here. And like I said, the blend with this is going to be barely noticeable at this stage. So again, under here, the light is not going to hit this area under here. So all we're going to do with this is just pick off some of the edges. Now we will get some light because it's not it's it's cloth, so you know it is uh, is see through or you know light can pass through it I should say so we're just going to lighten it up slightly around the edges and then this one here will leave so again with this color we'll go around for a second pass and what we're doing now is coming in slightly from where we did before so 
not sure if you can see down in there if I get the light there we can just see it you've got the deepest area in there and then where the light picks up that blue so we're going to start just at the top and we're going to go about 75% of the way down over the top of what we have just laid so if we went about 90% 90, 90 of the way down before and we'll go in about 75% of the way down now and the idea is to build this up in layers gradually now blue is probably the easiest color to do this with with layering or at least I find it is just because you can get the gradients so smooth and easy with this So again, staying away from right up against this edge, all of this will be painted because it's in the most light. And then we're just going to pick off the ridge here and the slight over the edge there, along here to just over halfway down. Bear in mind we went a little bit lower than that last time. And then from here we'll do this larger area. Like so. So again, leaving this area dark. We can go right over the the peaks we can pull them up so next we'll just uh, go back over this area and then the same in here and because this color is thinned down when we go over we're getting it slightly more opaque and so we're building it up in very thin layers to this mix of color to get what we want now I've just realized I've missed the inside of the hood with the first layer so we'll go ahead and do that now so with this the hood the majority of it is going to be dark at the back all we're looking to do with this is just along where the white is going to be and then down slightly over the edge because all of this will be behind her head and so we'll be in shadow okay so once again back over now I know I'm not cutting this like I normally would with some of my other videos but this is because I want you to be able to see exactly what I'm doing so that you can you can make sure that you're doing the, the same thing to achieve the, the same or similar results remember to keep it thin it will dry out a little bit especially if you're not using a wet palette so do keep that paint thinned and with this top flat large flat area we are actually we're shaded up this way we're highlighting up this way and then we're highlighting from here up this way so this is getting darker and then or from dark and getting lighter as we come this way and the same this way so this area here is going to be our brightest the same with this here
it is always going to be darker on the miniature than it is on your palette because it has got a dark undercoat to it from the previous dark blue but once you feel that it's not getting any lighter with each layer then it's time to move on to the next shade so which will be more adding more blue and once we get that up to using pure uh, Cantor blue that is the color that we are aiming for the cloak to be and then we can move on to the the more extreme highlights So as you can see, we've got that nice deep blue in the crease there, and that is getting lighter as we come up. All right, so again, we're going to take about 50-50 mix of the Cantor blue and the shade we were just using. Thin that down. And this is so much near the Cantor Blue. Now you could skip this step if you wanted to and just go with straight with the Cantor Blue. But we'll just take a look, see what it looks like. Now this will go on quite a bit brighter, but it will darken up as it dries. But the same thing applies. Go down to just over halfway down the previous color. each layer go to about 75 to 80 percent through what we have just the previous layer that we just applied so that would be the layer that we're doing now Okay, then we'll do just in here. And now we're just working in such a small area. Like I say, just under here, there's not going to be much light, so just doing a little bit of edge highlighting as we go. And then back onto another layer. Now you'll notice I'm not doing this edge because that is as dark as we want it or as light as we want it depending on which way you're looking at it but we do want to lighten up this top edge still now if you find that you're getting 
steps in color or in tone shade because the the paint is too thick all you need to do is water it down a little bit more and just blend in on that area so you work on where the the step starts and then going into the darker area bring it back with layers up to that step until it's almost matching again So this is pretty much what we are aiming for is just multiple layers over and over again extremely thin not to the point where the paint the pigment is separating and you're getting sort of pools of water and pigment on the miniature you know where it's trying to just sort of settle we do want it to to sit on the paint uh, on the, the miniature so now I'm going to take so now I'm going to take about a 50 50 mix of Cantor blue and the Teclis blue That's about right. Now, some people may be able to step a lot of these, skip a lot of these steps, and just go from the dark blue that we had up to the Cantor blue and thin that enough and then up to the Teclis blue but just personally the way that I do it is like this I like the results that I get if it works for you then great I've taught somebody something if it doesn't then uh, you know do what works for you so all we're doing with this that needs to be quite a bit thinner The same thing again. Just thin the paint down and then work our way up onto the highlights.
So same thing, just going over, blend it off, and then bring it back, layering it as we go. Right, if you notice that you're getting this step up here, just go back in with the previous colour and then feather the two together. And then whilst the paint is still wet, take our newer colour and feather that down. a little bit under here we just want to try and bring it up so it's a lighter looking blue although it is under her arm you are still going to get some light to it especially anything that reflects off of her her armor Alright, so next up is a very thin down checklist blue and this is just going to be for some edge highlights just on the extremes just on the very edges, the bottom and the very top peaks. So not the one down in here, that's already got enough there. But we do want this one here and again because this is thinned down, 
all we're doing is starting quite a way up and then with each successive pass which is going to come down slightly we'll do the bottom edge here side of our brush we just get a bit of edge highlighting in here same with this just looking at some reference here and it turns out I may be wrong about this it does have it is exposed to light due to the angle of our arm so all we've got to do with this is just put the extreme highlight on the edge and then because this is going underneath that there is correct and then the same with this we just want some extreme highlight on the top edge of these three pieces here like so and then in there we just take a small amount and just go for a thin line now I'm using the regimental brush from army painter from for this if you want to go and use a fine detail brush or a size zero then you can go ahead and do that so then again the extreme highlights and then each time just don't start up as high and be further down Right now I'm not entirely happy with this blend here we can see a step so all I'm going to do is go back to that original black and blue mix I'm going to thin it down a little bit more than needed and I'm going to bring it just over that, that join and then I'm going to do the same thing with that mix and the 50-50 mix. And all I'm going to do is with a wet brush, just pull that and feather it down on both ends.
it's important that you take your time with ones like with models like this as obviously they are going to stand out on the battlefield there's no hurry with them you're not doing a, a whole unit that you're trying to get on the battlefield quickly so you just want to get take your time and get those nice smooth transitions Right, so now we just want to pick up the highlights on the top edge here. So for this we're going to use the Cantor Blue and Teclis Blue mix as we don't want a sharper highlight as we have further up. And then we're just going to pick off in there slightly. Like so. There we go. And just on this edge here, and coming down here. <laughs> right, and there we have it. Nice smooth blend from dark to light with a nice edge highlight on it all right so that's part one of this tutorial I would thank you guys for joining me on this I hope that you did stick it through if you did and you are at this point then uh, let me take this chance to uh, ask you to hit that like button hit that subscribe button, hit that bell, so that you get notifications of when more videos go up. Uh, if you did like this, um, and you'd like to see more, throw you know throw a suggestion or anything down in the comments. If you want to watch me paint live, I do so on Twitch on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday evenings from 8 p.m. UK time. The links for that is down in the uh, description as well as links for my Twitter and Instagram where you can see more photos of my work follow me there um, on those two and uh, I shall catch you guys in the next video where we will be doing the inside white of the robe and if we have time in that one we'll probably do the front of this as well so thanks a lot for joining me guys and I shall catch you next time